What is going on guys, it's Kirtan Singh here, aka The Black Current. I'm back with a brand new Let's Talk video. Today, as requested in my last video, which you can check out clicking on the link in the description down below, I'll be talking about Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Now, Star Wars Episode 4 was the first movie released of the whole Star Wars saga in 1977, and it's been 41 years since that movie's come out. So there's been a lot of fans supporting it, there've been a lot of fans hating it, there've been a lot of people that just thought it was a movie for nerds. And growing up, I know that was true. A lot of people thought I was a big nerd for liking Star Wars, and I really love Star Wars. The movie itself, Episode 4, the original Star Wars movie, is a great movie, period. It has a great cast with the actors playing off each other so well with Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford in particular just work so well together and we see that develop in future films. And then you have the villains of the story which are iconic. Darth Vader, Stormtroopers and although Grand Moff Tarkin isn't an iconic villain per se, he is a menacing one in this movie. The way he just doesn't care about the people he kills. He willingly blows up the planet Alderaan just to get at Princess Leia. Darth Vader of course is imposing physically and with the voice of James Earl Jones, everyone loves how he sounds. He has iconic breathing noise and with that deep voice, he sounds so menacing and evil. And of course the film wouldn't be complete without the mentor of Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan Kenobi or Ben Kenobi as he's referred to in this film. He guides Luke Skywalker as he learns more about the Force and his father as well. We learn about Anakin Skywalker here and how he was betrayed by Darth Vader. And this adds emotional weight to Darth Vader's master, Obi-Wan Kenobi, in the fight they have on the Death Star, the first lightsaber fight of cinema history. And although it's not a fancy fight with flips and twists and everything, it has emotional weight behind it because you see a master and an apprentice fighting one of the light side, one of the dark side. Obi-Wan Kenobi who's fighting for his old friend's son has so much emotional weight behind his actions and then when he sacrifices himself so Luke and the others can get away, it's really emotional. You really feel for it and then you also are intrigued because of the way he disappears. He's not brutally killed, he becomes one of the force and then we hear him later on helping Luke several times. And of course we have great action sequences. There's the iconic Death Star run with the X-Wings and you also have the scene straight after the escape from the Death Star where they get chased by TIE Fighters and there the music really elevates that score even more. John Williams does an amazing job here. In my personal opinion, Star Wars A New Hope is the track of the soundtrack where he did his best work. With the main title theme, the Binary Sunset theme, the Cantina Band theme, and the Throne Room theme being some of my personal favourite from the actual track itself. And although there is a little plot hole in the way that the Imperials didn't bother to shoot down an empty escape pod for whatever reason, the regulations or whatever, it seems that that could have been easily rectified if they just shot it and the whole saga wouldn't happen. So that's one obviously obvious like, uh, that seems iffy thing going on there. Otherwise, the film is really good with a great main cast, interesting side characters, R2-D2, C-3PO, as well as Chewbacca, who I forgot to mention, who is such a great sidekick. Everyone wants to have a sidekick like Chewbacca. Then you have the character of Luke Skywalker, which everyone can relate to. You have Harrison Ford's Han Solo, which everyone wants to be, the cool smuggler. And Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia, who is that strong female warrior who is also royalty and political and has all this influence. She's a mixed bag of all these great goodies. That is why this film is one of my personal favorite films of all time, if not my favorite film of all time. This movie did a great job at enticing people into this sci-fi universe where all these creatures of different races, genders, looks, colors, everything are in this movie as shown by the cantina sequence. George Lucas created a universe for people to escape to and to love and to enjoy and to nerd out over. That is why I give this film a 9.5 9.6 out of 10. Thanks to a great cast, great visuals, the use of practical effects still hold up to this day, 41 years after the movies come out. You have great scores, you have great villains and a great and interesting universe with so many diverse characters and interesting creatures. 
this film is enticing, with a few moments of poor writing and that one glaring moment of why wouldn't they do that, as well as some forced CGI which was added in the special editions which is now the only version of the film you can get. This film does go down a little from a 10 out of 10. Overall it is a great film which if you have not seen yet, I highly recommend you see. So one, you can understand the films that are coming out nowadays related to the Star Wars saga, and two, you can see where it all began, in 1977. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Share this video with a friend as well. Leave a comment in the comment section down below on your thoughts about this video. Do you disagree with what I said? Do you agree? Let me know. Also give me some recommendations on what you guys want to see next time. Make sure you check out my social media accounts on the side here, and also check out my Patreon account, and help me out there.